hello and welcome to my youtube channel Canvas. in this video we are going to discuss norris type 1 reaction norris type 1 reaction is a photochemical reaction in which an aldehyde or ketone upon irradiation undergoes homolytic cleavage of cc sigma bond alpha to carbonyl to produce acyl alkyl radicals after absorbing photon, the molecule goes to excited singlet state, which by the process of intersystem crossing may go to excited triplet state. Either state may undergo alpha cleavage to produce acyl alkyl radicals. Here in the substrate, we can see that there are two CC sigma bonds alpha to carbonyl. But the bond which after cleavage keeps more stable alkyl radical gets preferably broken. For example, 2 butanone has two CC sigma bonds alpha to carbonyl bond A and B. Cleavage of A gives methyl radical while that of B ethyl radical. Since Ethyl radical is more stable than methyl. So, upon irradiation, bond B of 2 butanone will cleave preferably, giving rise to more stable ethyl radical. Now, we will discuss fate of free radicals formed by Nourish type 1 cleavage. The free radicals formed by Nourish type 1 cleavage may undergo several secondary reactions depending upon their structures. To understand those secondary reactions, let's have a hypothetical ketone molecule. Suppose after irradiation, the right side CC sigma bond alpha to carbonyl is broken to produce acyl and alkyl radicals. These two radicals can combine with each other to produce a starting material with racemization. It can undergo decarbonylation that is removal of carbon monoxide to produce second alkyl radical. The second alkyl radical and first alkyl radical can combine together to produce alkane or they can undergo disproportionation to produce alkane and alkene. The abstraction of an alpha proton from the carbonyl radical may form a ketene and alkane. The abstraction of a beta proton from the alkyl fragment may form an aldehyde and an alkene. Now let's go through examples. The first is nourish type 1 reaction in acyclic saturated ketones. For an acyclic saturated ketone, the outcome of nourish type 1 cleavage is generally loss of carbon monoxide to produce second alkyl radical. The first and second alkyl radicals may combine to produce alkane or disproportionate to produce alkane and alkene. For example, diethyl ketone after irradiation undergoes nourish type 1 cleavage to produce acyl radical and ethyl radical. The acyl radical immediately removes carbon monoxide to produce ethyl radical. The two ethyl radicals combine together to produce butane and they undergo disproportionation to produce ethane and ethene. Similarly, ketone upon irradiation undergoes nourish type 1 cleavage to produce acyl radical and t-butyl radical. The acyl radical immediately removes carbon monoxide to produce 
T-butyl radical. The two T-butyl radicals combine together to produce 2-2-3-3-tetramethylbutane and they undergo disproportionation to produce 2-methylpropane and 2-methylpropene. In the case of dibenzyl ketone also, after irradiation it produces acyl radical and benzyl radical. The acyl radical immediately removes carbon monoxide to produce benzyl radical. The benzyl radical doesn't have any chance for disproportionation. So, they just combine together to produce 1,2-diphenylethane as the only product. Let's have an unsymmetrical ketone. Upon irradiation, the right side sigma bond alpha to carbonyl gets cleaved as diphenyl methyl radical is more stable than benzyl radical. The acyl radical immediately removes carbon monoxide to produce benzyl radical. Here we can see that both the alkyl radicals are different and don't have propensity for the disproportionation. So they just combine together to produce alkane. There are three possible combinations. Two benzyl radicals can combine together to produce 1,2-diphenylethane. Two diphenyl methyl radicals can combine together to produce tetraphenylethane and one benzyl radical and one diphenyl methyl radical can combine together to produce triphenylethane. These are formed in 1 is to 1 is to 2 ratio. Nourish type 1 reaction in saturated 5 and 6 membered cyclic ketones. Cyclopentanone and cyclohexanone derivatives undergo alpha cleavage mostly from excited triplet state. Let's have a hypothetical saturated cyclic ketone. Here n is equal to 1 or 2 means it is cyclopentanone or cyclohexanone derivative. Upon irradiation it will undergo alpha cleavage to produce this acyl alkyl diradical. It can undergo recombination to produce the starting material with the same or different stereochemistry at alpha carbon. It can remove carbon monoxide to produce alkyl diradicals which can cyclize to produce cyclic product or intramolecular hydrogen abstraction to produce alkene. The acyl alkyl diradical can undergo intramolecular hydrogen abstraction by acyl radical from the carbon alpha to the alkyl radical to produce unsaturated aldehyde or it can also undergo intramolecular hydrogen abstraction by alkyl radical from the carbon alpha to acyl group to produce ketene. The ketene undergo can the ketene can be trapped by water, alcohol or amine to produce carboxylic acid, ester or amide respectively. Ketene formation predominates in cyclohexanone derivatives while unsaturated aldehyde formation predominates in cyclopentanone derivatives. For example, when 2-methyl cyclohexanone is irradiated in water, heptanoic acid is formed as the major product. Mechanism involves breaking up CC bond alpha to carbonyl, in this molecule, there are two CC bonds alpha to carbonyl, but left side bond is preferably broken as it gives more stable alkyl radical. Since 
the ketone is a six membered ring so ketene formation is preferred so di radical is converted to ketene and finally water molecule adds to ketene to produce heptanoic acid if the ketene formation is prevented by structural factors unsaturated aldehyde is the major product even in six membered saturated cyclic ketone for example 2266 tetramethyl cyclohexane one ohm when irradiated the unsaturated aldehyde is formed with 85% yield the reason is that upon irradiation cc bond alpha to carbonyl breaks to produce acyl alkyl diradical it doesn't have any hydrogen at alpha to carbonyl carbon so there is no possibility for the ketene formation so the acyl radical abstracts hydrogen from the carbon alpha to alkyl radical to produce unsaturated aldehyde let's take the example of carbon camphor when it is irradiated in methanol the cc bond between carbonyl and more substituted carbon selectively breaks to produce more stable tertiary alkyl carbonyl biradical abstraction of alpha hydrogen by alkyl radical and formation of a pi bond between carbonyl carbon and alpha carbon gives ketene now addition of methanol to ketene gives ester let's have examples of cyclopentanone derivatives first is 2 ethoxy carbonyl cyclopentanone as we know that cyclopentanone derivatives give gamma delta unsaturated aldehyde so upon irradiation 2 ethoxy carbonyl cyclopentanone will give e and z isomers of ethyl 2 oxo hex 2 inuit similarly this cyclopentanone derivative will give e and z isomers of unsaturated aldehyde let's have an example of little complex system as usual upon irradiation the cc bond alpha to carbonyl with greater substitution is selectively broken to produce more stable di radical the carbonyl di radical abstracts allylic hydrogen and at the same time formation of a pi bond gives unsaturated aldehyde which is a cyclopentanone derivative this molecule can also be drawn like this norris type 1 reaction in cyclobutanone derivatives the photochemical behavior of cyclobutanone is different from cyclopentanone and cyclohexanone in this alpha cleavage can take place from both the singlet and triplet excited states upon irradiation the cc bond alpha to carbonyl cleaves to produce a cyl alkyl di radical the di radical can remove carbon monoxide to produce 13 di alkyl radical which cyclizes to produce cyclopropane the acyl alkyl di radical can also undergo fission at alpha beta bond to produce ketene and alkene the acyl alkyl di radical can also undergo cyclization like this via ring expansion process to produce oxacarbene which can be trapped by alcohol to produce acetal in cyclobutanones and more rigid cyclopentanone and cyclohexanone ring system ring expansion is predominant for example when 2244 tetramethyl cyclobutanone is irradiated in methanol 
it undergoes alpha cleavage to produce acyl alkyl diradical which undergoes ring expansion to produce oxacarbene which is then attacked by methanol molecule to produce 5 methoxy 2244 tetramethyl tetrahydrofuran as the major product Norris type 1 reaction in cycloalkanes with cyclopropyl group at alpha position when alpha position of a cyclic ketone contains a cyclopropyl substituent the product is gamma delta unsaturated cyclic ketone having 3 carbon greater ring compared with original ketone for example when this 12 membered cyclic ketone with cyclopropyl group at alpha position is irradiated the cc bond between more substituted alpha carbon and carbonyl gets cleaved to produce acyl alkyl diradical rearrangement of alkyl radical like this gives z isomer of rearranged acyl alkyl radical while rearrangement like this gives e isomer recombination of acyl alkyl diradical of z isomer gives z isomer of 15 membered unsaturated cyclic ketone while that of e isomer of diradical gives e isomer of 15 membered unsaturated cyclic ketone examples of cyclic ketone capable of forming stable alkyl diradicals in such cases after alpha cleavage loss of carbon monoxide is the predominant process for example when 1133 tetramethyl 13 dihydro 2h indene 2 on is irradiated it undergoes alpha cleavage to produce acyl alkyl diradical which undergoes decarbonylation to produce alkyl diradical here the decarbonylation process is facile as the alkyl radical formed after the decarbonylation is very stable this hydrogen alpha 2 radical carbon gets abstracted by the second radical to produce 1 isopropyl 2 prop 1 in 2 il benzene as the major product examples of cyclic ketone capable of recombination of acyl alkyl diradical if a cyclic ketone is capable of forming tertiary alkyl radical and acyl radical which cannot form a stable alkyl radical after decarbonylation then in this case decarbonylation is not favored and acyl alkyl diradicals just recombine to produce same molecule or its stereo isomer for example this bicyclic ketone upon irradiation undergoes alpha cleavage on more substituted side to produce acyl tertiary alkyl diradical here the tertiary alkyl radical is, is stable and if there is decarbonylation it will result primary alkyl radical which is unstable so decarbonylation is restricted and in this case the acyl alkyl diradicals just recombine to produce a starting material or its epimer thus overall result is epimerization reaction that results an epimeric mixture that's all in this video please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon if you like this video thank you very much for watching this video